you go ahead and you take this polyethylene tube to the inner tube. And you leave a little nub of the tube free. And you tape it well down onto the, the inner tube so that it's... And then go ahead and carefully trim. Okay, that's, that's your first step, your second step. Now you're ready to fold this tube down and you see how you've everted. This is to prevent leakage around the inner tube into the outer tube in here. Your semen would backflow down into here, so you're going to prevent that. Now, if this is protruding a little too far, which it is, you have to hold the tube up vertically and go ahead and pull it from the other end. And there. And you can, that's about the right distance out of the tube. Okay, the next step is to tape the outer baby bottle liner to the outer tube. Now you have a leak proof setup. No semen is going to get around. Once it comes out of this tube, it's not going to go back down the bigger tube. Okay? Step is to take the large polyethylene tubing and put it over the large tube just exactly as we did with the baby bottle liner and tape it with the electrician's tape. You may wonder about the sterility of this procedure. The everything is clean, as clean as we can make it, and we know that the reproductive tract of the elephant, like all other mammals, is resistant to infection during estrus, so that if we are placing this at that time, we shouldn't have a problem, and so far we haven't, but we try to be clean, very clean about everything. All right, I now have the tubing taped to the large tube, and again, I'm going to evert it over the end of that tube. But before I do that, I want to put my bubble wrapping, which gives it the bulk. And this, this bulk, that, this flexible bulk that we're wrapping here, is to simulate the dimensions of the bull elephant's penis. Because we're trying to be as similar to the successful way a bull elephant breeds a cow as possible with this technique. We use the vet wrap to wrap around the bubble wrap because it doesn't stick and we can reuse the bubble wrap. It's just more convenient. You could use, you could use electrician's tape again if you wanted to, but you would have to throw the bubble wrap out each time if you did that. This, this is a way to reuse the same. Okay, now it's a matter of inverting the polyethylene tubing down over. You have to cut a, a long enough segment of tubing so that you can go past this. And remember, you've got the inversion, so use plenty of this polyethylene tubing. First we have to do, we have to take the uh, bottom of it, fasten the polyethylene tubing so that we don't have any leakage or irritation from the plastic there. And now in fact we really are ready to pass it. We will use a KY jelly and we will lubricate this and we will pass it up the elephant's track to this line. Then we will take our 60 cc catheter tip syringe and we will affix it to this tube and let me, uh, let me demonstrate that. Okay, now we're going to show how to inseminate through the tubing that we've made up.
First thing we do is take our 60cc catheter tip monojec syringe and remove it from the case. Then we're going to take the, the plunger out of the syringe and place a sterile baby bottle liner over the plunger. The reason we do that is that the black rubber of the plunger is toxic to the sperm. And we keep this sterile, so we, place, we will place the plunger or the syringe back in the sterile case when we're not manipulating it. The inside of the bottle liner is sterile, so by inverting the liner, we now have a sterile surface facing the inside of the syringe when we replace the plunger. It takes a little bit of manipulating to get the baby bottle liner on. Then the plunger is replaced in the syringe. Okay, then we're ready to put the semen in the syringe. We pull the plunger out, replacing it in the sterile syringe case. We take a needle, sterile needle uh, container, a needle holder, and we place that over the tip of the catheter tip syringe very securely. If you have any doubts, I'd tape it. You don't want this to come off because you, the next thing you're going to do is to pour the semen from one of the, for the day's insemination into the syringe. Slowly, without a lot of air or a lot of vibration or agitation, just gently and slowly pour the semen into the syringe. Once that is done, you replace the plunger into the syringe, which is a little bit tricky because you're going to have to do that without losing any of the sperm. All right, now we're going to attach the semen to the syringe to the small inner tube, and we're going to gently inject the semen into the tube so there are no air bubbles in the tube. This is done slowly, go ahead, with one person responsible for injecting the semen and another person responsible for observing the flow and noticing when it's filled. The, the small inner tube holds quite a bit of semen, perhaps as much as 30 cc's. And This is normally not done on a table, so we're, we're showing, it for, for video purposes, we're doing it this way. You can do, okay, hold it. You can see that the semen has now reached the tip of the, and we still have some air bubble, so we are, we are withdrawing slightly because we still have some air in the tube, but We've almost filled the tube. You can see it's coming up now. We don't want to inject any air into the cow. That's the reason for this. Okay, now I'm going to clamp the tubing off with my fingers. She's going to remove. Okay, now, now we're going to, we don't have semen quite all the way. We're going to inject until we fi again fill the tu inner tubing. And I have to, it has to be observed there. She's still injecting, injecting, it's coming up. Still hasn't quite filled. There, okay. All right, now I'm gonna hold the tubing with my fingers and clamp it off while she fills the syringe with extra buffer, capping the syringe off with a sterile needle holder. buffer is added similarly to the semen poured into the syringe. We'll, we'll pour just a little bit of buffer, but you want to use a full 60 cc's of buffer. This will be what pushes the semen into the cow and not air. We do not want to use air. 
So you would use at least 30 cc's of buffer and probably all 60 cc's of buffer. Now if I raise the tip of this, I can drop the level of, you notice how it's rising here. See the level rise and the other end here. Okay, she can go ahead and reattach it once she's, we should have no air in the system, or virtually no air in the system. Alright, just to demonstrate then the, the speed of injection of this, we will get 